using the semantics of the you know database which means uh, during that requirement analysis phase when we talk to the customers we are going to form some of the fun fds like uh, you know using the student id they may say that student is going to have unique id then using the student id we may say every student id can determine student name and every student id can determine let's say his address his phone number like that so i'm going to come up with uh, uh, some of the functional dependencies using the semantics that is called as semantics meaning right so meaning is going to give me uh, the basic set of uh, functional dependencies and after getting that basic set uh, i would like to do many things before going ahead with the normalization so these you know these functionalities which are required or the operations which are perform on functional dependencies are like this one is identifying the additional functional dependencies which means even though we got let us say uh, some of the functional dependencies using them i could even derive lots of functional dependencies so i want to do i want to know what are the additional functional dependencies i could derive and i want to derive all of them okay and let us say identifying uh, identifying keys keys means the candidate keys so you know the key concept right so i want to identify what are the candidate keys using functional dependencies this we didn't see before but this is a very interesting technique and we are going to use it uh, once we know the functional dependencies while we define while we start the construction of uh, you know relational database one way to get the uh, key attributes is by the meaning of it and the other way is you get the functional dependencies and we can run some algorithms on it and we can even find out the candidate keys that is one other way we shall see it next one is identifying equivalences of uh, fds which means they will say they will give you a set of fds and other set of fds and they'll say whether they'll ask you whether both are uh, you know semantically equivalent sometimes what happens is the same meaning of the functional dependencies whichever is expressed in one form can also be expressed in other form i'll just give you an example see this assume that one set contains a derives bc and d derives ef right this set and the other set contains a derives b a derives c d derives e d derives f now these two sets even though they look like they are completely different uh, fds they are actually same they are equivalent that is what we should identify i mean i want to identify whether uh, two uh, no sets of functional de dependencies are equivalent or not why i want to do it is maybe i want to go with the smallest uh, fds possible right and next one is i'll try to find the minimal fd set which means i'll try to minimize sometimes what happens is some of the functional dependencies turns out like they are not required for example in this functional dependency if i write a derives b already a is deriving bc here again a is deriving b so it turns out that you could actually delete this fd right so i want to identify such things and i want to you know delete them so whatever it is what i mean to say is we want to perform various operations on functional dependencies before we actually go for normalization what is normalization splitting up the tables decomposing no dividing the tables into various tables before i do that i want to perform various other activities so that you know normalization will be easy now in order to you know perform all these activities we have two uh, well known methods one method is you can use the inference rules inference rules means there are some set of rules which are already uh, specified they are like theorems you can use those theorems and you can use the results and you can go ahead with doing all these operations that is one way and the other way is using closure set of attributes closure set of attributes means okay i'll tell you later after this anyway these two are popular methods but then in gate coming to gate uh, if you use inference rules it is going to take a lot of time so we are not going to use inference rules at all i'm going to say what are the inference rules and what are the various theorems available there or the various types here we, we shall see them but then we are not going to use them in problem solving either in gate or in interviews never use them okay we are going to use the shortest form which is a closure set of attributes one good thing about closure set, closure set of attributes is it is not just easy it is not error prone 
if you go with this inference rules you know you might have to apply many rules before you come to the conclusion and uh, there are there are lots of chances that uh, you know it you might may commit some error there therefore the error prone method is uh, using the closure set of attributes so we shall use this extensively you know in this course not just for git it is useful even for the real world database design also so if you become a database administrator and if you are planning to design a database right from the basics the schema and all you go with the attribute sets okay closure set of attributes many people use that and there are even programs and algorithms which are specifically written which are which will take uh, which will act on the closure set of attributes only right so even though this is theoretically proposed and it is a formal framework practically everyone is using closure set of attributes okay okay anyway i'll tell you what that is first let's finish it off okay now inference relations inference rules sorry inference rules means uh, what do we infer from uh, existing functional dependencies right Re uh, reflexive reflexive is nothing but uh, let's see this a a derives uh, a determines b if b is a subset of a it means that if uh, this one is already present in this one that is trivial isn't it therefore every trivial uh, dependency is always uh, always true that is what they say so if left side is a superset of right side or if the right side is a subset of left side it means that whatever you wanted is already present here so it need not determine anything right it always holds it is called as reflexivity and next one is transitivity you must be knowing about this transitive relation earlier also right if a determines b and b determines c then a determines c that is the rule of uh, transitivity given a value of a if you are able to uniquely get a value of b right and given a value of b if you are able to get a unique value of c then definitely given a value of a you will be able to get a unique unique value of c how first give the value a value of a and get the value of b and take that value and give it here and since this relation holds you are going to get a unique value of b therefore for a given value of a you will get a unique value of b which means in case if these two holds if right if this one and this one holds then this one holds true that is the meaning of transitivity and decomposition so decomposition means if a is capable of deriving b and c right if a can determine the values of b and c uniquely then a can determine the value of b as well as a can determine the value of c independently also which means if you give a value of a it is going to give you uh, the unique set of values for b and c then obviously it is going to give you unique set of value for only b as well as only c isn't it therefore if a determines b c is true then a determines b and a determines c is also going to be true right and next one is augmentation augmentation means adding right see this if a determines b then a c can determine b c the reason is given a value of a you are going to get a unique value for b right then given a value of a and c you can get a unique value of b and c it is just logical isn't it i don't know how to explain that also it is just a uh, intuition right augmentation nothing you are just putting b c here and there right and moreover that is not uh, non trivial also right that is semi non trivial next one is union so what is union if a can determine b and a can determine c then a can determine b c it is just the reverse of this uh, augmentation right and next one is uh, composition composition means adding them right if a can determine b and c can determine d then ac can determine bd right these are all the rules which are actually logical also right in case if they ask you in the exam about any of the properties you can directly write them just by the name itself you know it will indicates uh, what the meaning of it is so by combining these rules they have derived even some few more rules which are not very important they are composite you know these are the basic rules right so what i mean to say is you just know about them in case if they ask them ask in the exam directly about inference rule you will be able to write it sure but then we are not going to do any problems on this especially you know this kind we are going to perform do everything of you know written here using closure set of attributes only right it is very interesting and i'll tell you how to do it now okay we shall move on to closure set of uh, attributes fine
Hi, if you are planning to do masters, then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in India. I'll give you all the reasons. So, first reason is, out of one lakh students who take gate every year, there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your master's in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral which, which means without any security now you can get education loan Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join game of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested, in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 555 454. Okay, thank you.